Okay, the next method here of the conventional antimicrobial susceptibility testing method, we have here your agar dilution. So agar dilution will just have the same procedure as with your broth dilution, only that you are using agar. And therefore, we try to um, plate our inoculum plus your antibiotic here in your agar or petri dish. Okay, so... Procedure for that, you just need, ganun pa din, standardize first your inoculum. Then, after that one, you try to streak in your Miller Hinton agar. So, from your standardized inoculum, kuha ka ng sample for that, tapos i-streak mo dito. Pag nag-streak tayo, when you're doing your antimicrobial susceptibility testing, so ganun siya. Dapat even lahat ito. Ganyan. Sobrang even dapat. Hindi siya Hindi siya quadrant streaking, but it should be even, dapat na parang even ang growth natin. Then, with your diluted na antibiotics, you just need to spot, inoculate here, and try to observe here for the growth or non-growth. Ganun lang siya, may tutubo or walang tutubo. So, pareho lang din ang principle niya, only that kanina sa ating uh, uh, broad illusion, that's cloudiness, pag may growth, dito naman, makikita mo talaga may, may colony na mag-grow. Pag walang growth, so wala kang makikita ng colony. Okay, so, example for that, but then again, you still need to dilute pa din. Okay, and have the dilution for that. So, we have your example, we have your enterobacteria shape, and we have also your pseudomonas erogenosa. So, our inoculum for that is your test medium, I mean, your Miller-Hinton agar. Okay, for your Staphylococcus, okay, Staph here would have your Miller Hinton agar plus your 2% na sodium chloride. Incubated at 1 at 35 degrees Celsius. In the case of your Enterobacteria shade, that's uh, for 16 to 20 hours. And for your Staph, that should be 24 hours. For your fastidious organism, then you need to supplement your Miller Hinton agar with 5% na ship blood. And then try to incubate as well that for okay 35 degrees Celsius and then you could have your 5 to 7% carbon dioxide. The same through with your stuff. Okay, for the interpretation, the results, same lang then. You need to have your growth control pa then, sterility control. And then identify your minimal inhibitory concentration. So ito yung lowest concentration ng drug natin. Okay, kada plate, kung alin doon ang pinakawalang growth. Ang pinaka-lowest na drug concentration na walang growth ng bacteria to become your MIC. Then you can also perform here your breakpoint okay, for your susceptible, intermediate, or even your system. Then the most popular one would be your distribution. This diffusion here is your Kirby Bauer. So this is just your antibiotics here being provided. You don't need to dilute your antibiotic for that. Pwede naman i-dilute mo if you are using for your if you are testing for that but most likely we are we are already utilizing the commercially prepared na antibiotic this. But um in the for the research purposes you can have your paper this i-absorb i-absorb niyo lang doon sa paper this ang mga like plant extract at different concentration so ganun siya. So procedure for that you just have your Bacterial inoculum, standardized bacterial inoculum. So, ganun lang siya. Strict mo siya even. Okay, para even ang growth. Then, nilagyan mo siya ng mga antibiotic. Okay, so... Okay, then try to have that incubation temperature. For example, we have your E. coli. So, that's being incubated. Okay, at 35 degrees Celsius. Inoculum size, 1.5 times 10 to the 8 because this one is your distribution. Incubated one for 16 to 18 hours. Okay, then try to observe here the zone of the inhibition. So like for example, this one is your antibiotic. Okay, so again, dito ang bacteria na natin, nakastrick na ang bacteria na natin dito. Then we have antibiotic for it. Then try to observe here for the zone of the inhibition. So, this is the zone of inhibition as identified as the clear zone surrounding your bacterial, surrounding your antibiotic list. And try to measure okay, the diameter of that expressed in millimeter. 
You can measure that one using your ruler or can also measure using your vernier caliper. Pag nag-measure tayo, it should be, po ito ang zone of inhibition natin, so from that area to that. Okay, hindi yung dito ka lang mag-measure mula dito hanggang dito. So, dapat from that, papunta doon. Okay, so that's how you measure that one. Okay, then for the interpretation, you just need to refer to the chart. Okay, based on the, the diameter, millimeter diameter. Okay, so pag may mga, may mga, ano tayo, may, mga, may chart tayo for that. Like, like, kung 10, less than 10 millimeters, so susceptible, more than 20 millimeter resistance, something like that. And try to report as susceptible, intermediate, or resistant. Pag susceptible, mean to say, makikita ka ng zone of inhibition. Pag resistant, okay, so most likely, wala kang zone of inhibition. That's resistant. Okay, so we have here the variables as being standardized with our culture media when we're doing here your distribution. So first one, we have here the calcium and the magnesium content or the cations. Calcium should have here approximately 25 milligram per liter and for your magnesium should be 12.5 milligram per liter. So increased concentration of your calcium magnesium would eventually result here to the false resistance or inactivity of your aminoglycoside against your pseudomonas. On the other hand, increased concentration of calcium magnesium also tend to decrease the effectivity of your tetracycline and all types of your bacteria. Next, we have here your thymidine content. The thymidine content should be minimal or even absent. Just in the case of a high concentration of your thymidine, it would Eventually result here to your decreased activity of your cotrimoxazole, the cotrimoxazol, or the combination of your sulfo, sulfometoxazole, sulfonamide, and your trimethoprim. The pH, on the other hand, is 7.2 to 7.4. So decreased pH less than 7.2 would try to decrease the activity of your erythrocycline erythromycin, clindamycin, and your aminoglycoside. On the other hand, increase pH more than 7.4 7 would tend to decrease the activity of your tetracycline. Okay, then we have here the depth of your agar. Okay, so you need to standardize the depth of the agar. That should be 3 to 5 millimeters lang dapat ang thickness. More than 5 millimeters, sobrang thick na niya, magiging resistant ang result ng antibiotic natin or bacteria against your different antibiotics. Pag less than 3 mm naman, so sobrang, okay, sobrang nipis niya, so it might result here to the susceptible na result. Okay, another one na standardized would be your inoculum. So, we have this already. So, when speak about your uh, your broad Broth illusion, so it contains here uh, 5 times 10 to the 5 colony forming unit per ml. Then we have also here your agar dilution should be 1.5, 1 times 1 times 10 to the 4 colony forming, per, colony forming unit per ml. Then we have also here your distribution, the Kirby Bauer should have 1.5 times 10 to the 8. Atmosphere should be maintained in the ambient, ambient air. Temperature 35 and the length would be highly dependent. Most likely, we're using here your broad micro dilution that's 16 to 20 hours, but if you have your distribution, that's a 16 to 18 hours. Lang. Okay, now we have here the commercial uh, susceptibility testing. Okay, the first one we have the spiral gradient instrument. So, spiral, okay, so para siyang, okay, so it's just made up of the different antibiotic na strip. Instead of the disc, gumamit siya ng strip. And most likely, ang pinaka-highest concentration ng antibiotic natin would be at the center and pababa siya uh, towards the periphery or the edge na bumababa ang concentration ni antibiotic natin. So one of the example of that, we have your E-test. Ang E-test may use of the a spiral gradient antibiotic that is being impregnated in your plastic strip. Oh, the plastic strip here is a rectangular na plastic strip. So, ganun. Procedure for this one, okay, so just have your standardized inoculum. 
Then, isa-straight mo lang siya dito. Again, even pa din. Tapos, lagyan mo siya ng ito, ng strip na rectangular na plastic strip. Okay, of your antibiotic. Then, try to incubate at the required incubation time and observe here for the formation of the elliptical zone of inhibition. So, elliptical pa ganun siya, ganyan. Hindi siya perfect na circle. Elliptical. Okay, MIC is identified here on the area where nag-intercept ang ating growth. So, dito na part. Dito ang ating MIC. Kung anong concentration ng antibiotic natin doon, that become your MIC. Okay, so, it is where your growth and the inhibition try to intercepts. So, ganun pa din, only that, iba lang kanyang ginagamit. Pero ang interpretation, so, ganun pa din siya. Okay, then we have here the automated uh, system or method of your antimicrobial susceptibility testing. You can use here your Vitec 2. This is an uh, automated instrument. It's a card system. So, all you need to do is just um, uh, fill in the card with the bacteria inoculum and then try to insert that one with your instrument. The instrument, automated instrument analyzer will be the one going to interpret the result. Okay, then we have also here enhancing the resistance detection. So, we could have here some of the tests that would really allow us to check for the resistance of your, some of your bacteria against certain antibiotics. So, you can have here oxacillin agar screen. Oxacillin agar screen here will detect the resistance of your uh, different um, organism, including your staph, against your penicillinase resistant penicillin, or simply your penicillin. Ang penicillin group of your antibiotic includes your oxacillin, wait, oxacillin, methicillin, nafcicillin, dicloxacillin, cloxacillin. Again, those are your penicillin, penicillin group, penicillin group of your antibiotic. So, this test would detect you, allow you to detect here penicillinase resistant penicillin bacteria. So, ang principle natin, since they belong to the same group, oxacillin, methicillin, nafcicillin, so pag nag-check ka ng isa sa kanila, like oxacillin, pag resistant sa oxacillin, it would signify na resistant na siya sa entire group ng mga antibiotic natin. So, magiging resistant na rin siya sa, resistant rin siya sa, sa methicillin, nafcicillin, and the other members of the group. Another one, we have also here your uh, vancomycin, vancomycin agar screen. So, this would detect here your resistance, enterococcus resistance to your vancomycin. Another one, we have also your aminoglycoside screen for detection of resistance against your aminoglycoside lagentamycin. Okay, so it will detect here your enterococcus resistant and enterococcus against your gentamycin, which is your aminoglycoside. Another one of Sosilin, this test here, so pang pareho din ito, only that this one is agar, this one is your this. And we have also your D test for the detection of your resistance against your macrolide, erythromycin, and your induced clindamycin. Okay, so we have your specific example for that. So first one, we have your oxacillin resistance staff. Okay, so we have here your... Okay, so oxacillin resistant staff here are actually... Those are the staff, staphylococcus here, which are resistant to your penicillinase, resistant penicillin group of your antibiotics. So we're talking about your MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus. So for the detection of your methicillin resistant staff here, hindi tayo gumagamit ng methicillin antibiotic for testing. Pwede mo gamitin oxacillin. Kung resistant siya sa oxacillin, okay, then it will be resistant. It will be considered also as your MRSA. Okay, we have here, why are they resistant here to your penicillinase resistant penicillin? Okay, those are the bacteria or staph na meron silang special na na penicillin binding protein, the your penicillin binding protein 2A, which is being encoded here by the MEC-A gene. And this is responsible here for being resistant, being resistant to your penicillin group of your antibiotics. Okay, we have the test for detection of your oxacillin resistant staph. Or simply also you're related to your MRSA then, methicillin resistant staph. So, ulit, 
pag-resistensya sa oxacillin is also resistant to your methicillin. That's why it could also screen for the presence of your MRSA. Okay, so we have the test for the detection. So you have your oxacillin agar screen. So this is an agar, Miller Hinton agar, or oxacillin agar plate with your 4% sodium chloride plus 6 microgram of your oxacillin. The thing about your oxacillin agar plate or screen, it will detect your staphylococcus na oxacillin resistant. But it will not detect your coagulase negative na mga staphylococcus. So, it will detect on here your Staphylococcus aureus, resistant to your oxacillin, but not with your other group or other members of your Staphylococcus, which are your coagulase negative. So, para ma-detect natin, including your coagulase negative staff, aside from your staph aureus, kagamit na yun ng cefoxetine, which is another antibiotic. Cefoxetine here is actually... Considered to be a surrogate marker for the detection of both your Staphylococcus aureus oxacillin resistant and other member of your coagulase negative staph. Okay, because this sofoxetine try to allow the expression more of your this one. Okay, in a protein by protein that would allow you to detect that one. So pag agar screen lang, madetect lang ay coagulase positive. Ay, ang madetect lang natin ay oxacillin resistant staph aureus but not your coagulase negative stuff. Pero pag cefoxetine, it would allow you to detect both your stuff aureus and your coagulase negative stuff, which are oxacillin resistant. Okay, another test here for detection of your resistance against your macrolide erythromycin, clindamycin, among the stuff would be your D test. So basically, some of your stuff produces here a gene. We have here the ERM gene. So this gene here, if your staff Arius here would contain this gene, it try to have a uh, resistant against your erythromycin. And at the same time, also be resistant to your clindamycin. But if, for example, your staff Arius try to have the gene uh, MRSA gene, so it will only have the resistant with your erythromycin, but not with your clindamycin. For you to check here, what what your what gene does your Staphylococcus aureus possess here? Perform here your D test. So D test being performed here by just your Miller Hinton agar and streak your Staph aureus in that one. And then lagay lagyan mo lang ng dalawang antibiotic this year, your erythromycin adjacent to your clindamycin. And then try to incubate overnight and observe here for the zone of the inhibition. So positive result would be the flattening zone. So, my zone of inhibition, my clear zone dito, giving a D-shape zone of inhibition surrounding your clinda, clindamycin. If that's the result, I mean to say your Staphylococcus aureus here would be resistant to your erythromycin and at the same time also resistant to your clindamycin. So, I mean to say your staph possess this gene, ERM gene. On the other hand, pag wala siyang ganitong Result, so me to say, your staph aureus will only be resistant with your erythromycin, but not with your clindamycin. Okay, another one, we have here the test that would detect the presence of your beta-lactamase. Some of your bacteria possess beta-lactamase, like your Neisseria gonorrhea, Haemophilus influenzae, some of your staph, uh, your Muraxelia cataralis, and we have also here some species of your bacteroides. Beta-lactamase, so that's the enzyme we try to degrade the beta-lactam ring of your penicillin. And therefore, beta-lactam group of your antibiotic aside from your penicillin. And therefore, uh, if they have the beta-lactamase, so your beta-lactam antibiotic here will not be effective against them. For the detection of your beta-lactamase, the enzyme, so we have here the test. So you could have your chromogenic uh, uh, chromogenic cephalosporine nitrosephine test. So we have the commercial um, uh, commercial test kit. We try to detect this method here. We have your cephinase test. Okay, the test kit itself here is just a uh, filter paper impregnated with your nitrosephine. Then all you need to do is just uh, apply your bacterial inoculum plus your water or your, in or your NSS 
Then try to serve here for the red na color. So, pag nag-red siya, I mean to say, your bacteria contains the enzyme beta-lactamase. Another method here, we have, that will detect your beta-lactamase, we have here the basin ability of your organism to convert your penicillin. If that one contains the enzyme beta-lactamase, it will be converted here to your penicilloic acid. It is what you are detecting for this test. You could have your acidimetric, or could also have here your iodometric method. Okay, for the sedimetric method of detection of your penicillinic acid related to the presence of your beta-lactamase enzymes, so the agent for that, we have your citrate buffer, penicillin, plus your indicator in a phenol red. Positive result will be red, negative is yellow. Then we have your iodometric method for the detection of your penicillinic acid as a degradation product of your by the action of your beta-lactamase with your penicillin. Okay, so this one would have here the reagent in the form of your phosphate buffer penicillin plus your starch iodine complex. Positive result is colorless, negative is purple. So, by the colorless, it will signify that your bacteria contains the beta-lactamase. And therefore, magiging, hindi magiging effective ang ating mga beta-lactamase. Um, antibiotics.